talk a little bit uh, today about what we're doing at the eDream Institute, the Emerging Digital Research and Education and Arts Media at the University of Illinois, and the work done at the Supercomputing Center on Visualization. I started out as one of the early computer artists back in the 70s and 80s. We were called the second wave of artists. The first computer artists, like, such as Lillian Schwartz, began experimenting with technology at Bell Labs, for example. I began working in this second wave where we actually developed all of our software and tools. I developed a color editor. I started out in photography and painting, but when I found that the computer could provide me millions of colors, I turned to the computer to do all kinds of explorations artistically and developed the compulage, which was, this was long before scanners and uh, ways of taking computer film. I would set up the camera in front of the screen and, and develop software to divide it up, then printed the photograph sections in the dark room and put them back together as large scale installations. In 1985, as a computer artist, I joined the faculty at the University of Illinois down in Urbana-Champaign. And at that time, the Super National Center for Supercomputing Applications began. They had opened their doors, and I arrived with my artistic tools at hand, ready to work with the scientists there. I was convinced that I had to convince the director of this new center, that artists brought visual literacy to the mounds of data that these supercomputers were going to develop uh, as a result of science. Early on, I began forming in 1985, 86, these Renaissance teams where I, as an artist, would work with a technologist and a scientist working on this type of simulation billions of numbers coming out of a supercomputer uh, to describe colliding galaxies, compressing time and space billions of years in one minute. But I could take my algorithms, my ideas, and artistic literacy to these simulations. I developed the color for this simulation, and the scientist developed the uh, simulation itself to describe this phenomena, and I work with a team of creatives that span this, uh, di the disciplines of art and science. Um, Bob Patterson is in the audience. You can raise your hand, and so is A.J. Christensen. And the other teams that I work with, we develop these visuals out of numerical data, working with scientists within their domains. In this case, we took data from a team of experts on how does a tornado develop, and we worked to bring the information out of just piles and cubes of numerical data to describe this developing tornado. We, as visually literate uh, collaborators, came up with ways of developing these visual metaphors of cones and tubes and using color to describe the information and revealing out of this uh, piles of numerical information, um, giving you an intuition of how the air flows around a tornado or how the wind flows on the surface. And we discovered this secondary counter-rotating tornado in the data that the scientists did not know were there. We also have worked with the U.S. Department of Transportation on very practical things like traffic in Chicago uh, or Washington, D.C. or Portland, developing these metaphors to try to understand and apply different representations and develop technologies for human computer interfaces to access that data so that traffic engineers can set up scenarios of evacuation for traffic jams or other issues in Chicago and providing an interactive tool to enable that capability. 
Also, we as a team of artists working with scientists have brought science to the public in a, using rules of cinematography and, chore and developing a choreography system by taking data such as the Milky Way galaxy that you see here or other types of data to the movie setting, to the public, but presenting it in a cinematic way. It is a kind of creative computing where we as collaborators work on the science and bring these ideas in a cinematic way to the public. We've worked on Tree of Life, Terrence Malick's film, and did a couple of shots using real scientific data showing a, a supernova and the Milky Way galaxy, as well as Hubble 3D. Hubble 3D is an IMAX movie narrated by Leonardo DiCaprio. The University of Illinois had a very special part in this movie. Our team did virtual tours of data from the Hubble telescope that has never been seen before and never been brought to the public before in this way. We provided these virtual tours, but also the University of Illinois, also one of the astronauts in the film was an alum of the university. So I'm going to play an excerpt from Hubble 3D, narrated by Leonardo DiCaprio, and he says it all. This is a tour of Orion, one of the uh, most studied nebulas in the history of humanity, and it's never been seen in this, in stereo, and in this way before because we took flat images and we literally built the three-dimensional space working with the scientists, reg registering the data, uh, and taking that data from the Space Telescope Science Institute, developing the renders that you see here to show the nebula, and also different ways of representing the stars that are more realistic when they hit your eyes. So I'll let Leonardo narrate over this. There are amazing things happening inside these clouds. As we look through Hubble's eye, we're getting to see them as never before. We're descending into a gargantuan canyon of clouds. It's 90 trillion miles across. Their energy creates unbelievably strong winds, howling down this vast canyon at five million miles an hour. In the interest of time, I'm going to move on, but this is very important to us, our team, our eDream team, to bring this scientific knowledge to the people. You've paid for it. Uh, this is uh, giving you an embodied experience of what it would be like to travel faster than the speed of light and to be there in the Orion Nebula. Also, we work with and support performing artists. Uh, this is uh, uh, Al Huang, who is a Tai Chi master. He, we, he asked after many, many years, he's 75 years old, he is a Tai Chi expert and dance expert. He's always wanted Qi, the energy from the body, to be visualized. Here is a test of some of the software that Alex Betts from our group developed to interactively grab the dancer's shape, project it on the screen, and emanate this flow uh, this numerical flow from the body for the dance. And here is the actual performance. This was Alex Murray's final performance of a 45-year career. Uh, and we supported this and showed the chi of their 
interactive experience on stage. And uh, another project that is being shown here this week at the Chicago Symphony Center is The Great Flood, in which we visualize GIS data to help the filmmaker show the 1927 flood and the impact that that had on lives. Most of the film is from the uh, 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 Library of Congress, old black and white film, but we managed to take some of the data and provide some scenes for that film. It's a live performance with Bill Frizzell providing the music, and that's here on Friday at the Chicago um, Symphony. Tomorrow morning, you get to see this process of Renaissance teams working with scientists. We give a CIW lab over at the Adler Planetarium, where we literally show how we collaborate remotely worked together to make the Deep Space Adventure, which is being shown. It's the Granger Theater is the most advanced theater in the world. And we do a demonstration of how we collaborated to make that big show out of scientific data. I hope you can come tomorrow. And, oh, here's a little fly through. We're going to show that in the large theater tomorrow. And in the interest of time, I just want to close and say that eDream at the University of Illinois is now uh, offering a new PhD in art and culture for those interested in crossing these boundaries as artists who want to study the technologies, who want to work with the scientists, and discover new knowledge in this very interdisciplinary realm. And also coming uh, this year, this next year, is a book that I'm happy to edit with Ellen Sandor and Janine Fran on how Midwestern women in the arts have uh, contributed to the digital revolution historically right here in the Midwest where there really are great ideas and great artists working with great technologies. Thank you.